Good day, great dream learners. Welcome to our lesson for Science 3, Quarter 2, Week 7, Day 3. Our topic for today is non-living things in a water environment. Before we begin, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you! Activating Prior Knowledge Have you been to this water environment before? What do you see in this water environment? Lesson Purpose Intention In this lesson, you will identify non-living things in a water environment and describe how these help plants and animals living in the given environment. Lesson Language Practice The water environment refers to the natural ecosystem and habitats that are primarily composed of water. This includes oceans, seas, rivers, lakes, ponds, wetlands, and groundwater system. This environment supports a wide range of aquatic life forms and are essential for the survival of many plants, animals, and humans. The water environment plays a crucial role in maintaining ecological balance, providing drinking water, supporting agriculture and fisheries, and regulating climate and weather patterns. Reading the key idea stem. Activity 3. How do non-living things in a water environment help living things? Read the following procedure. Developing Understanding of the Key Idea STEM Activity 3. Here are the materials that you're going to need. Per group, magnifying glass pen or marker notebook, 250 ml bottle water samples from a pan. Prepare the materials. Join your group. Your teacher will take you to a nearby pan. Observe the pad and look for non-living things and living things. Record your observation in your notebook. Here is Table A. Here is the possible answer. Number 5. Like the school garden or a farm, funds are environment. Discuss with your groupmates what you see in an environment and how water, plants, and animals depends on their environment. With your teacher's supervision, get a sample of pond water and place it in a bottle. Using a magnifying glass, observe the pond water sample for non-living things. Draw the non-living things you observe in your notebook. Question 3. How do the non-living things help the water plants and animals survive? How do plants and animals depend on each other and their pond environment? Well, here are the answer for the following questions.
deepening understanding of the key idea stem. Here is a simple food chain based on a band ecosystem. Sun as a source of energy. Two algae plants producers. Small fish a primary consumers. Frog a secondary consumer. And birds a tertiary consumers. This food chain shows how energy from the sun moves through different living things in the pond. The algae use sunlight to make food. Small fish eat the algae. Frogs eat the fish. And birds eat the frogs. This helps learners understand the flow of energy and the connection between living things in the pond. The sun provides energy. Algae use sunlight to make food through photosynthesis. It is the producers. Small fish eat the algae. They are the primary consumers. Frog eats small fish. They are called the secondary consumers. Birds eat frog. They are called the tertiary consumers. Making generalization and abstraction. Changes in one part of the environment can affect living things in many ways. For example, if the water in a pond becomes dirty or dries up, plants and animals that live there might lo may lose their home or food source. Polluted water can make animals sick or cause plants to die. If temperature changes, it can affect how animals grow and survive. Even small changes can affect many living things because they rely on each other and their surroundings to live happily and healthy. Evaluating Learning Below, illustration of a fund. It is an environment for plants and animals. Answer the following questions. Here are the correct answers. Great job today everyone! You listen well, share your thoughts, and work hard. Keep up the good work. Always remember to read, learn, observe, and have fun. See you next time!